you're like me, you've probably been bothered by this integral here for a long time. This is the integral of x to the x dx. Now, it looks pretty simple just looking at it, but really it's not that simple because you have a growing base and a growing exponent at the same time, or the x te tetration of x. So this function is actually not easy to integrate at all. And you've probably heard this term if you've looked into it as it's a non-elementary integral. So what that means is that it's not impossible to integrate. It just means that the end result is not expressible in terms of our, what we consider normal functions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to integrate this function indefinitely and write our answer in terms of the gamma function. So the first thing I'd note is that x to the x, since we have a growing base and a growing exponent, it's not really easy to work with. So let's write uh, in terms of base e. So the way we can write x to the x is in base e is we can write our first x as e to the ln x to the x power. Then we can just simply multiply our exponents. So we have e to the x ln x. Now we have a pretty, uh, pretty standard uh, Taylor series, McLaurin series definition of e to the x, or in this case, e to the x ln x is the input. And that would be the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, which equals e to the x. So in this case, we've just changed our input to x ln x and we can substitute that in for this series here. So then we would have the series from the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x ln x to the n over n factorial, and that's equal to x to the x. So now we can try and integrate this with respect to x instead of integrating e to the x ln x and trying a u substitution which will not do do too much good okay so let's let's take that approach and let's write it out as the integral of the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x ln x to the n over n factorial with respect to x so this is ultimately what we want to find here. <clears throat> and for the purposes of this, we'll assume that we're integrating from zero to some variable a and as a function of a, so that our function is continuous, our antiderivative of x to the x, because x to the x before values of zero is not continuous. So we will just assume that our antiderivative is integrating from zero to some upper bound a, and we will come back to that later. So because our function is continuous, we have a, an integral of a summation, we can ex interchange the limits. So we have this sum from n equals zero to infinity, and we can bring our n factorial outside of the integral. So we have one over n factorial because that is a constant multiplied by the integral of x to the n times ln x to the n with respect to x. Okay, so now we can do something with this and we wanna try and eventually make this integral some variation of the gamma function. So, the substitution that I'll make is I'll say let u equal negative ln x. And I'll make it negative for a particular reason, and you'll see why in a second. So that would mean our x is going to be equal to e to the negative u, and dx is going to be equal to negative e to the negative u du. So if we substitute that back in, we'll have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over n factorial times the integral of e to the negative u to the n times negative u to the n negative e to the negative u du. 
So first thing is I'll take this negative right outside of the integral, and we can actually take it right outside of the sum. So we have the negative sum from n equals zero to infinity over one over n factorial times the integral. And now we can see we have e to the negative u to the n, and then over here we have e to the negative u technically to the first power. So what we can do is because these are multiplied, we can add the exponents. So that's going to simplify to e to the negative u raised to the n plus one power. And then what I'll do here is I'll make negative u to the n and I'll separate that into negative one time to the nth power and then u to the n du. <clears throat> so now we can take this outside of our integral expression as well. And we'll have the negative sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n over n factorial times the integral of e to the negative u. And I'll actually, I'll write that as just negative u times n plus one, and then u to the n du. So now we're getting closer to an expression that's similar to the gamma function. So I'll just erase this part here. And we'll, I'll keep that there so we can remember the substitution that we made earlier. So now this expression here, we can write as, um, if we do another substitution, let's say we let t equal to u times n plus one. Okay, so that would imply that dt is just n plus one du. Okay, so if we make this substitution now, we we'll have the same thing here, the sum from n is greater than or equal to zero of negative one to the n over n factorial times the integral. And we'll now just have e to the negative t. And then our u is going to be t over n plus one. So I'm gonna put that in brackets, t over n plus one. Oops, and that will be raised to the exponent n. And then our du will be 1 over n plus 1 dt, or dt over n plus 1. Okay, so this is looking good now because what we can do is we can apply the nth power to the top and bottom of this fraction, and we'll have the negative sum n is greater than or equal to zero of negative one to the n over n factorial multiplied by the integral of e to the negative t. And then we'll have t to the n and then n plus one to the n, but we also have n plus one to the one. So we can write that as t to the n times dt over n plus one to the nth plus one power. And now this is just a constant in our integral, so we can take that right out of the expression as well. I'm just gonna erase this at the bottom here. <clears throat> so now we have the negative sum, n is greater than or equal to zero, of negative one to the n, n factorial, n plus one to the n plus one power. And then here, now we have an expression that is really, really close to the gamma function. So if e to the negative t, t to the n dt. Now, normally our gamma function is expressed in terms of um, the bounds zero to infinity. But here we have an indefinite integral. But remember at the beginning I said that we wanted to make x dx continuous. So we were actually integrating from zero to x, some variable x, and I said it could be a of t to the t dt, something like that. So if we kept track of what was happening to these variables throughout the substitution, then with our first substitution, where we have u is equal to negative ln x, negative ln of zero, the limit as x approaches zero of negative ln x, 
that is going to be equal to negative negative infinity or infinity. So our bounds are then going to change from the integ from the integral to infinity to a negative ln x of this expression. Then when we did our second substitution, which was t is equal to u times n plus 1, infinity times n plus 1 is going to stay infinity. So we're going to have infinity. And then uh, negative ln x times n plus 1 is going to be our upper bound. So those are our bounds. But now if you notice, we have this negative sign outside of the integral. So we have this negative integral. We can reverse the bounds. So now we have the integral from negative ln x n plus 1 to infinity of e to the negative t, t to the n dt. And that works out perfectly because we can represent that in terms of the upper incomplete gamma function. And I'll write that out for you guys here. So the capital gamma of s comma x is equal to the integral from x to infinity of t to the s minus 1 e to the negative t dt. So here we normally have s minus 1 as in front of our t, but here we just have n. So that means that our first argument is going to be gamma of n plus 1, because if we substitute n plus 1 into s, we will just end up with n. Now our second uh, argument is the lower bound of the integral, which we found through our substitution to be negative ln x n plus 1. So that is our, um, that is our part of our answer in terms of the upper incomplete gamma function. So let's just write that out here and then we have our final answer. So our final answer is going to be equal to the positive sum as that negative reversed our bounds earlier. If n is greater than or equal to zero of negative one to the n times the upper incomplete gamma function of n plus one negative ln x times n plus one all over n factorial times n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power. And that is it right there. That is the integral from 0 to x of t to the t with respect to t in terms of the upper incomplete gamma function. I hope that's helpful and maybe makes the integral less bothersome to you because I know it bothered me for a long time trying to integrate x to x. So thanks guys.